Hey guys, Nick with Armory Survival here. Stick around and watch this video. I'm going to show you why the new Energy Apex by Energy Solar is one great unit, one great tool, and it works perfectly for what it's made to what it's made to do. The original Kodiak over here. We're going to do some side by side testing, show you what's new, what's changed, and how this can work for you. Stick around to the end of the video if you like what you see and you think this would be a good tool for you. We're actually doing a giveaway. I got one of these on order for next month for July that we paid for. Enter the contest. We're going to send this out to one winner so that you guys can see how cool this thing is. So stick around. Let's get going. So I have the original Kodiak here that I've had for over two years now and I use it on a pretty consistent basis. Take this thing out camping to run different equipment, um, take my coffee pot with me when I go camping so I can brew coffee, uh, take it to trade shows to run power in the booths when I don't have power, I've let friends borrow it for the same reasons, it gets used often, it just doesn't sit in a box waiting for the apocalypse or anything like that. We've actually put this thing through real world testing very often for the last couple years. We found some limitations on it? Yes, of course you have. With any tool you need to pick the right tool for the job. For example, you're not gonna to wanna to go out and buy a 2000 watt gas generator to hook to your house to run something if your power goes down, just like you're not gonna take a whole house generator out camping to hook up to run your CPAP machine. Two totally different things, two totally different purposes. The whole reason behind the Kodiak and the Apex is to be a portable, lightweight backup system. You're not gonna run heavy wattage, heavy amperage things for long periods of time on these things. You're just not going to. If you need a system like that, obviously you're gonna to have to build something bigger and in most cases, the battery alone just for something like that is going to weigh more than these. I mean, this is 20 pounds here, 25 pounds on the Apex. You can feel the five extra pounds on that guy. But they're light. They're not meant to be big, heavy systems that run your MIG welder out in the middle of nowhere. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about how these work. They have the battery inside. It's 1100 watt hour battery that feeds into a 1500 watt inverter. The inverter is a true 1500 watt inverter. It will run things at 1500 watts. Now, for a system like this, it's been designed so that the battery doesn't get just pounded by that inverter over and over at the high, at the high draw, which is why this system has a 2000 charge cycle rating. If you look at the competition, you're going to find 500 charge cycles because those batteries just get hit so hard from the inverter constantly at the higher, at the higher watts and the higher amps that it degrades those cells. It doesn't last as long. These are meant for long-term portable backup power. I'm going to say that again, long-term portable backup power, not to run big heavy stuff all the time. So I did some testing with the Kodiak and the Apex using a space heater to see how long they would go on max, like with max power on the space heater, which is about 1,650 watts. Uh, Want to see the cutout points between these two units to see if they're similar, if they're different, anything like that. Keep in mind the Kodiak's about two years old, the Apex about a week, week and a half old. So there might be a little difference, I don't know, we'll see here in a second. But let's check out the test, see what happens. So I have the space heater hooked up outside. This thing is gonna pull about 1,650 watts, like I said, uh, on full. We'll see the screen here. So I'm gonna turn this on, get it going on high, and we'll start the timer as soon as it goes here. Everything looks like it's working good, so I'm gonna go back here. And in just a second, when I zoom in, I'm gonna speed up the video so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing, but this is gonna be running completely without any voltage drops until the timer shows otherwise. So as you can see right now, uh, 1,700 watts. And we're at about 24 seconds. Okay. We're going to speed this guy up just a little bit so you don't have to sit here and watch this. At about 2.36 seconds and if you watch right about here 2.39 is when the Kodiak stops giving the full power to the space heater. This is where that voltage drop takes place on this particular test. If you let it if we just let it go for a little bit longer it would take about 10 or 15 seconds and it would kick back on again. Now we're gonna run the same test on the Energy Apex using the same heater, same settings, same high settings so we're pulling the same wattage. Get it turned on and timer started. Keep an eye on this here for a second. We'll speed up as it goes through here too, but you'll see some of the results here. Let's get zoomed in. All right, we're pulling 1650 right around there, watts. Let's watch this test for a second. A 
Okay, 2.35, approaching the same spot that the Cody got kicked out, and 2.39, exact same second that the Apex kicks out on the same test, almost to the exact millisecond. So interestingly enough, both the Kodiak and the Apex cut out at pretty much the exact same time, 2.39 seconds on that. And again, that was just a test to, to see how far we could push this thing. You're not going to use these to run space heaters under normal circumstances. That's just too much power, too much wattage to draw that these won't maintain. Uh, I also wanted to see what we could do if we used the same space heater on medium and a smaller space heater to kind of keep the wattage around 1,000, 1,100 to see how long it would last on that. So we did testing again side by side with the Kodiak and the Apex. Let's see what happened there. I'm gonna run this big oil heater, space heater here, which takes quite a bit of power, 800, 900 watts on medium. And I got this little guy I'm gonna put in conjunction with it just to pull some more power so we can see how long it runs. We'll time it here, see what it does. So we'll fire up the Kodiak. We are at, let's see here. Oh, it already turned this guy on here. So we're gonna go, it was at 12.15 volts without this on, so. Not 100% full, but pretty close. Okay, we're on medium, and this guy's on high. Let's start the timer. And right now I'm pulling uh, about 1200 watts, give or take some, depending on when these heaters are doing. So I'm gonna let these sit here. It's probably gonna get a little toasty, so I'm not gonna stay right here, otherwise I'll start sweating, but we'll come back, we'll keep an eye on this, we'll see how long this thing will go for. just over 11 minutes now with this running at uh, about 1140 watts and if you watch right here 1106 is right when the Kodiak drops the voltage so that battery can can start to recover we'll give it just a second and you'll see that it kicks back on the wattage will pop right back up and start running that again here and there we go we're back up and running again Now we're going to run the same exact test with the two heaters on the same settings with the Apex. We'll turn on the AC power, get the heaters going. Everything's getting up and running, and we're going to start the timer because we're running at about 1,200 watts right now. So again, we'll let this go. We'll speed up as it goes through, and we'll show you the, uh, the cutoff time on the Apex here. Coming up on 18 minutes here with the Apex, and right here about 18.04, right there is when we cut out. And again, if we leave this running for just a little bit, this one actually recovered a lot quicker. It only took 11 seconds the first time before the uh, wattage kicked back up and started running that heater again, as you'll see right about there. So we've got the results on that. The Kodiak cut out at about 12 minutes and 6 seconds and had an average, about every minute it would uh, drop the voltage, the voltage drop would happen a minute later the voltage would come back and it would run again for about a minute. I watched this for 4 or 5 minutes for both units and on average the Kodiak recovered 15.5 uh, seconds on average. On the Apex 
it cut out its power at 18 minutes and 4 seconds with an average recovery time of 11.5 seconds. So I had a faster recovery time and lasted longer. Again, I've had this unit over here, the Kodiak, for about two years. I'm guessing I have five to 800 charge cycles on it, so that could account for the, for the little difference. But it just shows that the battery management system and the way that these are designed are exactly the same. So the Apex and the Kodiak, there's really not a lot of difference in the way that whole thing works right there. I also did some other testing with the Apex, like making a pot of coffee at my house, uh, running it strictly on the Apex, and that worked great. I'll show you how that went. All right, we got the coffee pot loaded up, got it started, and it's pulling uh, around a thousand watts. It's hovering just a little bit above and a little bit below a thousand watts. We'll let this go for a second again, and I'll uh, kind of fast forward through the boring parts because I'm sure you guys know how coffee brews. I don't need to show you that. And it's all done. Brewed that whole pot of coffee there, and we dropped down to about 23 watts just to maintain the running of the coffee pot. But other than that, it ran that whole thing. It didn't skip a beat. It wasn't any voltage drops. Did exactly what it was supposed to do. Let's go through some of the features on the Apex now compared to the uh, Kodiak. So you have your six 110 volt outlets, same as you had on here. Uh, if you want to run those on the Apex, all you got to do is turn your switch one time clockwise and it's gonna turn on all your all your stuff, your AC and your DC, so all your ports are live and running. Back in the middle, you're off. If you turn to the right, now you have your base camp light ports and your 12 volt cigarette plugs and your USB ports that are live. You got Qualcomm fast charge on there, you got your USB-C, you got your screen showing your input and output, which is really cool on this unit. It'll actually show you right up here the discharge or the charge rate. So if you have panels hooked up to the side here, it's gonna show how much power you're putting in if you have a, a load hooked up here pulling power out, it's going to show how much power is going out. If you have both hooked up, the solar or the input and the output, it's going to calculate that and tell you your net discharge or your net charge. Oh, I'll turn that guy off. Um, on here, you can see the EC8 plugs where the solar panels go in. We'll talk about those again here in a minute. And you have your RV plug. Now, I don't have an RV, so I've never actually tested even my Kodiak on there. My pop-up camper, I don't use the power in there. I just use this, so I don't have it hooked up to there. A lot of people, a lot of customers that I work with and I've talked to, use these in their campers, use them in their RVs, love them, have no problem with them. Of course, you can't run your air conditioner, you know, big, heavy draw, things like that. But this plug does work. I talked to my buddy Jim over at Full Moon Adventure RV Club, and he uses these things extensively, his Kodiak and now his Apex in his RV. And he gave me permission to show you this test he did on his Apex in his RV. So take a look. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take our RV power cord right here. And we're going to plug it into the Apex. If I can do this one-handed here. Uh, there we go. Turn on the inverter. And I'll have the uh, camera right here. Hopefully showing you what, we, what kind of wattage we're using there. I think I better readjust that. There we go. Okay, so we have our camera and our Apex plugged in. Let's take you on a little tour. Show you all the things that we have plugged in over here. <clears throat> all right, so now that we are inside, uh, let's start with the entertainment center. So we have our Nintendo Switch going right there so we can play some games, some Mario Kart if you have kids or you're just a big kid inside. We also have a tablet going on that's being charged right here. And you're going to have my laptop that's also being charged. We have lights going on all over the place. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 LED lights going. 
And up in the front, that stereo is actually what runs all of the audio from our TV. So we've got like a 19 inch TV right there. It's a monitor, lots of USB plugs on it, swivel arm. And we do have Wi-Fi in here. You can see everything is connected to Wi-Fi, hooked up to Full Moon Adventure Club. And if we go across, I will show you that setup over here. Up top, we do have some things plugged in right here. We've got our Canary. This is our security system, which is right down here. And maybe if I close these curtains, you'll be able to better kind of see what's going on down here. So this is the Canary, which is a security system. It like kind of keeps an eye on things and you can uh, stream video from it on your phone. Have another tablet right here that's hooked up to my server. So I have a Plex server. So you can watch pretty much any movie you want. Up to eight people can connect to that and watch different movies. And that's all run by this guy right here, which is a hard drive that has Wi-Fi built into it, its own Wi-Fi. So it'll broadcast that Wi-Fi signal so up to eight people can connect. I have a nice big cell phone booster that's also plugged in. So that's going on right now. And that is giving pretty much all of our signal strength to our Verizon jetpack right there. And that's what's giving us our Wi-Fi and it's doing a really good job. I'm actually really impressed with it. Uh, we even have an Alexa hooked up. Computer, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. So that's kind of cool. And if you look down below, we do have a robotic vacuum cleaner that's also plugged in. And uh, that's charging up as well. It actually does a pretty good job too. We were skeptical about that, but it's doing a great job. But all of these things are being powered by the Apex, the Energy Apex. And so that's running absolutely everything in here, which is impressive all by itself. But another really cool thing that if you look over here to the side, this refrigerator is running off AC power, not gas. So that's very cool. And then if we look over here, we're gonna have the microwave. And let's really push this guy over the top and we'll be able to check out the reading. I don't know why the camera's being so difficult with me here. Get up there, look up. <laughs> Come on. I'm just gonna move it by hand, there we go. So let's see if we can run the microwave as well. I can't run it for long because there's nothing in there. But it does actually run the microwave. What can I microwave? I should have thought of that beforehand. But the microwave does indeed work. And so all of these things are being run by the Energy Apex, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, and the fact that it'll run the microwave as well is just, crazy so that 1500 watt inverter i'm sure is pushed a little over that with that temperature setting but let's do it again just so we can kind of see what's going on with that temperature setting it's going to start sparking if i don't have things in it but you can absolutely run a microwave <laughs> even with nothing in it off that apex which is very very crazy and you may be looking so as you can see, you can power a lot of stuff downstream in your camper RV with running on, running on one of these. If you have solar panels plugged in, it's going to last even longer. Now, on the like I said, on the Apex, you have these EC8 connections, which look like these here. The reason Energy does this is the panels have to be hooked up in parallel. They don't want to hook up in series because it'll increase the voltage and damage the charge controller in here. So the easiest way to do that is have a connection type that's, I'm just going to call it foolproof. You can only plug it in one way, that way you don't mess anything up. These connectors and these cables are rated to about six times the power and the amperage that can be put in there. So that way it just makes them more beefy. They're not going to get too hot, they're not going to catch on fire or anything like that. They're good connection types. We've heard people say that, hey, these aren't UV resistant, they're not waterproof. They're probably right, I don't think they are. This system was never designed or marketed to be a permanent installation. It was made to be portable, to be backup, to use camping. But some people do install these permanently, which works and it works well. So Energy is actually coming up with a waterproof and UV resistant cover for these connection types. In the meantime, I've tested this and it works quite well. You just get these little cord protects. I'll put links to them down below the video here. Um, like I said, I've been testing these. You can just, I'm using a cable here, just not a direct one, it's an extension. Put one on each side and when you close it up and snap it down, you got a waterproof and UV resistant cover. If this thing starts to crack or fade over the years, they're five bucks, toss it and get a new one. It's a good, good solution if that's a concern for you right now until Energy actually comes out with their cover. So that's the initial testing that I've done on this. And I know some people are going to say, well, hey, you guys are a distributor. Of course, you're going to talk good about this stuff. 
if I didn't believe in this and I didn't think it was a good product, I wouldn't carry it, I wouldn't endorse it, and I definitely wouldn't make videos saying that they're good. I wouldn't put my reputation on the line for that. I've used my Kodiak, like I said, for a number of years with lots of different things, no problems. I'm sure I'm gonna get the same use out of the Apex. From what I'm seeing, it has the same stuff. It it's, has the better charge controller though, the upgraded MPPT charge controller, has the better screen. Um, I found that charging this from the wall is quite a bit quicker. When I would charge this from the wall, 10 or 11 hours to, from zero to 100%. On this one, I'm getting about seven hours. So obviously that charge controller is making quite a bit of a difference. Um, as far as charge up times compared to the competition, if you look at, I'm just gonna say the Goal Zero Yeti 1000, for example, because that's a pretty near competitor. With their panels, they say it takes eight and a half to 20 hours with 200 watt panels. I've never tested it, but from what I hear, you're close to 14 or 15 hours on that. With two of the two panels on this guy here on the Energy Apex, you're only looking about seven and a half to eight and a half hours. If you max it out at five panels, three, four hours maybe. So not only do you get 2,000 charge cycles compared to 500 charge cycles with competitors, but you also charge this thing so much quicker. So if you're out camping, you can use this to, use, to run your blender. Uh, I don't know anyone who, anyone who runs their blender for 15 or 20 minutes at a time, maybe a couple of minutes at a time, stop, let it recover, use it again. Um, you can run power tools if you need to. You're not running those constantly. You're running them intermittently, so it's gonna work just fine. Pretty much anything that you can keep under 1500 watts, if you can run it intermittently, it's not gonna have a problem. You're not even gonna, not even gonna know that there's any sort of delay with this battery. That's just the way it works. Uh, the charge time, again, is phenomenal. If you can recharge this thing in three to four hours and compared to 15, 20 hours, you can use this a lot more in different circumstances, whether it's camping in your RV, emergency power backup, grid goes down. And, you know, if you're a prepper, it, it's a good thing to be able to get this thing, keep it charged, put it in your garage, put it in your basement, pull it out and use it every now and then, make sure you know how to use it, and you're good to go. It charges quickly. So, all right, guys, that's it for this video now. I have a ton more footage of testing the Kodiak and the Apex on my Dometic fridge freezer portable unit, as well as my fridge freezer that is in my house, my deep freezer, my neighbor's CPAP machine, air compressors, power tools, tons of different things. I just don't want to jam it all in here and uh, take up too much time, so we'll do some other videos with that. If there's anything that you want to see us test, please drop a comment down below the video and let me know, or you can call or email us. We'd be happy to check it out if we're able to. And uh, for the contest, check out the link below and the, the link below the video here to see how to enter. If you enter, please leave a comment down here below and let me know you entered so I can keep an eye out for that. Like I said, we're going to pick one winner next month in July, ship out a brand new Apex. This contest isn't sponsored by YouTube. It's not sponsored by Energy. It's just only sponsored by Armory Survival. Just make sure you read those terms and conditions so Google doesn't come and kidnap me in the middle of the night, beat me with a stick, anything like that. But we'd be happy to... Uh, hear what you have to say. We're, we're excited to see who wins this and to see what they think about this unit. It's a great unit. Again, thanks for watching and uh, leave any comments with questions or uh, comments. Have a great week.